Greetings again. Dear colleagues, uh, we are starting our press conference for the prime and backup crews for ISS 4142 expeditions. Literally 20 minutes ago, the Interdepartmental Commission finished its work where they summarized the training course for the crew members here at the GCTC, and the crew will continue its preparation at Baikonur, representing the crew's prime crew. Alexander Mikhailovich Samakutayev, Roscosmos Cosmonauts, Commander for CM, TMA, Soyuz TMA, uh, AM, Sirova, uh, uh, Yelena, Flight Engineer, uh, Barry Wilmer, Flight Engineer for Soyuz, Flight Engineer for ISS 41, and Commander for ISS 42. Backup crews, Roscosmos uh, cosmonaut Gennady Ivanovich Padalka, commander for Soyuz and flight engineer for the ISS. Flight engineer Mikhail Borisovich Kornienko, flight engineer for Soyuz and the ISS. And uh, NASA astronaut Scott Kelly, flight engineer for Soyuz and flight engineer for the ISS. Ladies and gentlemen, please, questions. Please. Belaglazova, Ekaterina, Ekaterina Belaglazova, Russian Cosmos. Uh, first of all, congratulations on such a difficult stage of training. I'm wishing you good luck. My question is, what is your uh, scheduled program, and are there going to be any interesting experiments? Uh, what uh, are you planning to do on board? Thank you uh, for your good wishes. Uh, greetings again to everyone. Our flight program is very busy. During our flight, we will perform over 50 experiments. Many of them will be uh, have, will have uh, very good practical applications for science, uh, for the humanity, uh, specifically medical experiments. Now, uh, regarding unusual work that I have done in the past and will do, what is interesting is that we will be sort of cleaners on board. Uh, our objective will be to remove the old hardware on board, uh, which is not being used anymore, but uh, still is on board uh, to free up space uh, for new equipment, we will need to remove this equipment. It's not an easy task, but uh, we feel prepared. Thank you. Other questions? Golov Irina Golovina, 360 degrees uh, television station. My question is for Ms. Irova. Yelena, how long did it take you to train for this flight? You know, I would say that I have been preparing for my flight my entire life. That's a general statement, but to be more specific, I've been uh, in the cosmonaut corps since uh, 2006, when I first uh, started uh, training as a candidate cosmonaut. So we can start counting at that time. So you can do your own math. How long it took me? It's It's been hard work. What was the most difficult part during your training? I think uh, for anyone, uh, the most uh, difficult thing is to overcome yourself. How does your family feel about your upcoming flight? My family has always supported me, always helped me, and uh, they have always tried to do anything they can to help me. Thank you. Hello, Elena Sinova, Itartas. My traditional question is, what is going to be the symbol for your flight and uh, will be your weightlessness indicator? That's a good question. It is true that we always have a number of traditional items uh, that we use as uh, our tokens. Usually the commander selects it, but uh, we are an unusual crew, and so we allowed 
Yelena to make this choice and to choice and to select our weightlessness indicator. Yes, uh, thank you. I would like to thank our gentlemen here for this opportunity given to me. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I would tell you that it is going to be a toy, a small item that I got uh, from my daughter. It's very important to my daughter. It's going to be a hair, not a usual hair, but the, the hair that was uh, brought from the Olympic Games. She um, liked it a lot, and uh, so I'm going to use that as our weightlessness indicator. Thank you for your question. Hello, Mushin Igor from, uh, from Mir Television Station. Two questions. For one from Ms. Sirova. I know that you had to go through survival training, including in the desert and in the water. Can I tell us uh, how it went and how you what was difficult and what you had to do to overcome your difficulties? Thank you for your question. As you know, we do go through special training. One of them is surviving in the desert as part of a crew. And uh, of course, uh, this training gives us an invaluable experience in, su on s in surviving in difficult conditions. Thanks uh, to the fact that we have been trained very well and very correctly, and the fact that we had very good instructors who gave us a lot of knowledge, everything went nominally. It was difficult, but uh, we were very successful in uh, surviving in, under these conditions, and so I appreciate the help that was given to us during training. Now. Another type of survival training we did in the taiga forests. As you know, this is possible as well, that we will land uh, somewhere in the deserted areas in the forest. And so I trained uh, with Barry Wilmar and Alexander Samakutyaev. Again, we were very successful. And I think in part uh, that the reason is that uh, we were very good crew, very tight crew. We were able to support each other and help each other. And I think that's uh, one of the reasons for our success and why we were able to accomplish this. Okay, Yelena, my second question for you is uh, what experiments are you going to be in charge of on board of the ISS? Just like others, I have a long list of experiments that I will have to perform. One of them is very interesting. That's called Vizier. We have unique designers and specialists who have designed a special method uh, for performing imagery of the Earth's surface using special coordinates. This was developed here in Russia by our Russian specialists, and uh, we are working on it right now. It's a very promising. Thank you. Hello. Snimash uh, Press Service. Are you planning to perform any Snimash experiments? If you are, which ones? I can tell you that, yes, we will have a number of experiments. I won't list all of them. You can see this in a brochure, see it in the brochure, where, which lists all our experiments in detail. But yes, definitely. And uh, I'm sure we will perform them from the beginning to the end. OK, thank you. Life News Television Channel. Can you tell us a little more about your expedition, how long you will be on board, and what is the main goal of your flight? <laughs> the main goal for our flight is to perform it successfully and come back. We will be 168 days on board, which is a typical duration, I would say standard duration for crews to remain on board. As you know, we rotate indirectly 
цель экспедиции ну, Now the goal of the expedition uh, it's really it would take too long to describe we have a huge number of experiments we have a lot of work we have station outfitting activities repair work uh, the ISS has been on orbit for over 15 years so, so imagine you live in your own apartment for 15 years so you will need to perform certain renovations replace some items etc so that's what we will be doing we will be working with equipment uh, restore some equipment repair some equipment specifically with the life support systems we will also perform the integration of uh, new scientific uh, equipment technical equipment we have a long list of tasks that we will need to accomplish throughout our expedition also medical work, medical experiments, targeted at um, uh, studying the effects of weightlessness on a human body. So a lot of complicated, complex tasks, but exciting nonetheless. And I'm sure we will be successful. Maxim Prihuda from NTV. Uh, one for Mr. Samakutyaev, one for Mr. Barry Wilman. Wilmer. Mr. Samakutyaev, uh, what exams did you take the other day and what was the most difficult one? You know, the exams are really the easiest thing that a crew member does. It's exciting, you, you do get nervous a little bit just from hearing the word exam. When, but the training itself that preceded these examinations was much more difficult. A lot of work went into it, and uh, we focused on different aspects of our work, of nominal situations. The examinations are built in such a way, or designed in such a way, that uh, you get an envelope with a number of questions, six or five questions. And those are not just easy questions, those are off nominal situations that may happen. Neither the, commission, the examination commission nor the crew members know what questions will be there. Uh, we make sure that uh, the questions are photographed and documented and sealed. So, Depending on the exam, uh, we are either in Soyuz or ISS, and uh, we play out these uh, abnormal situations. Uh, then the commission assesses our work based, again, on the abnormal situation. All these situations were not very typical for us. Those were all difficult, uh, all life-threatening. Especially should we fail to perform certain actions, but again, it, take, it takes um, a cohe uh, cohe cohesive, tight crew to, to overcome, and uh, fortunately, we are that crew. Okay, thank you. Maybe an ordinary question. What's it like to work with a woman? <laughs> Professionally, it's no different than working with anyone else that I've ever worked with. Elena has been professional for the two years that I've worked with her. She's been impressive and it's, she's been a joy to work with. But yes, she is a woman and uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to fly with her. She's kind, she smiles, which is nice to receive. And, uh, and that's, that's really nice. So that, I appreciate that, appreciate that as well. Uh, all of the cosmonauts that I've met here are, are professional, capable, and I'd love to fly with all of them, um, but I wouldn't trade these two for any of the others. Thank you. Please. Hello, Evgenia Donikova, Corley of Television. Elena, question for you. Uh, when we prepared a long video about your preparation, we saw a video where the Energia representatives were showing you uh, very complicated equipment that you will be working with uh, on board of the ISS. And so here's my, uh, here's the first part of my question. Do you remember anything in specific that impressed you more than others uh, with the equipment that you saw? 
that was presented to you by Nergia. The second part of my question is, you have had to process, process a lot of information during training, different equipment, different activities. Uh, what is your secret? How did you manage to internalize all of this? Do you have uh, your own method? Thank you very much. This is a great question. It is true that uh, we trained a lot, and it was very interesting, especially since we will be working with new equipment. I can't say that I was uh, shocked by anything or very impressed by anything because it's just your business as usual, regular work. And uh, what you try to do is uh, make sure that you perform your task well and correctly when you are on board. As I said earlier, specialists always do their best, give us uh, all their knowledge and uh, we are always ready to perform any task. For proce regarding processing the knowledge that we receive, well, one thing is that you don't, it's not as easy as you would think to become a cosmonaut. It takes special people, and so we are surrounded by amazing people here who do have the capacity to process a lot of information. We know that this is uh, our work, and we are prepared to perform this work, and we will continue to do so. Daria Smirnova, REN TV. What were the emotions that you experienced when the final decision of the commission was made for you to be the crew member? Can you repeat your question? When it was decided that you will become a crew member, I mean, right now, 30 minutes ago. Well, we were prepared. We were ready for today's event. <laughs> Although it is always possible, I guess. Uh, first and foremost, I was very proud of our entire crew that we trained, we passed all the exams, we performed very well, and I am grateful to the entire crew uh, because, again, only working together, all of us, we will be able to accomplish all our objectives. I was very proud. I was very happy. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Sergey Shamsuddinov, Cosmonautics News. Good question, very practical. I keep being asked that question all the time. My hair will change, but the length of my hair will remain the same. When I trained in the U.S., many female astronauts gave me advice uh, how to wash your hair in five minutes. Turns out that it's quite easy to do on board. It's actually easier uh, than if you have short hair. But of course, I will try to put my hair up to make sure that it's not in the way when I'm trying to do my work, and also that it's not in the way of my colleagues. Did I answer your question? Yes. Can you tell us how you can wash your hair in five minutes? It's a whole procedure. At least it takes longer to excla explain than to do it. I'm sure when I'm on board of the ISS, it will all be filmed and you will be able to see this. What hairstyle are you planning to have? Well, I can just braid my hair, put it in a bun, not that hard. Okay, a question for the backup crew. All of you have a lot of experience, uh, also in space flight as well. well. How do you, what do you think of the prime crew? Do you think they're ready? The prime crew is ready. 
We were, we did a report uh, to the commission today that we are only prepared to be the backup crew. We're not ready and not prepared to be the prime crew. Thank you. Dear friends, Nikolai Borisovich Bazin here, who represents uh, the uh, Cosmonautics Federation. My name is uh, Nikolai Borisovich Bodin, I apologize, representing the Cosmonautics Federation of Russia. First of all, I would like to address the Prime and Backup Crew on behalf of the President of the Cosmonautics Federation, uh, Vladimir Kavalenko. We congratulate you on the successful completion of your training and on the upcoming flight. According to the rules of our federation, for the crew members who fly in space for the first time, we have uh, a, an ID, cosmonaut ID. Uh, it has a, its own unique number, so number 143. It's uh, done properly. All the documentation is here. Later on, we'll put in the launch date. This ID uh, is international because on the last page, uh, we have uh, in five languages the request to assist uh, this crew member in various situations. I am very Pleased to present Yelena Olegovna Sirova uh, with this ID. She will take it with her in the space flight. She will put the correct stamps here, as tradition requires. The stamps are on board of the ISS. This is tradition that the tradition that has been passed on from the Mir station times. And in its in her future space flights. She will bring this ID with her. And so it is my pleasure to present Elena with this ID. Thank you. Can you please open it and show us the first page? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Allow me to finish my presentation by wishing you good luck and keep 450 kilometers underneath your ship. Thank you. Yekaterina, go ahead. Lena, question for you. I know that uh, you are, uh, you get uh, uh, more questions than others. You have a lot of info. You get a lot of information, but you do very well. How and when did you decide to become a cosmonaut? And the fact that Mark wanted to be a cosmonaut did it have anything to do with it? Also. Has your idea of being a cosmonaut changed since you started training? That's a great question. I've always, since I was a child, wanted to work in the space industry. And to be honest with you, I never dreamed that I will be as close to space as I am now. Only thanks to the fact that I wanted to be as close as to space as possible, I studied at the space uh, department of the Moscow Aviation Institute, uh, met my husband, uh, Mark Zirov, and uh, what we found in common was our love for space. And then together we started working at the Rocky Space Corporation, Energia. So these uh, were all our steps towards becoming what I became. Mark joined the Cosmonaut Corps 
earlier than I did, three years earlier, but we've always supported each other. Why am I saying all of this? Because I want to show that I knew what would ha what uh, would happen if I be joined the cosmonaut corps. So it was a very conscious decision. I knew what to expect, and I was not afraid of the difficulties. And so here I am. Here's our crew. We are ready for flight. And soon our dream will come true. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Yes, of course. Vladimir Lamakin, Kaliningrad, Sky Pravda newspaper. You have a lot of work scheduled for you. <laughs> How did you prepare? Especially holidays. Yes, holidays on board and celebrations on board are special events. По большому счету у экипажей как таковых вот strictly speaking we don't get any days off or holidays uh, the way you, you would uh, have uh, on earth station is a living breathing organism and if uh, you rela relax and lie on your couch so to speak uh, it's going to be different but, of course, we always look forward to significant events or celebrations in space. So, for us, it allows us to allows us to maybe uh, eat um, festive food, maybe in our stash, uh, in addition to our regular food, especially if we have any fresh fruit or vegetables. And so, for New Year's, the second crew that will be launching in November, usually what happens is they bring a small Christmas tree. Also, we have um, decorations on board, uh, even New Year's decorations. Also, in November, we're hoping to receive care packages from Earth. For us, for Russian crew members, New Year's is the biggest holiday from your childhood, New Year's and your birthday. Also for military personnel, International Women's Day, March 8th. And what's interesting is that we're going to have all these holidays when we're on board. We do get a few days off, meaning not uh, weekends, uh, but uh, the off-duty days that are coordinated by all the partners. And so we will have uh, two Christmases, uh, Mar March 8th and New Year's. And so we'll have an opportunity to to spend time together in a more relaxed atmosphere. We won't be as busy with work as we normally are. But again, we're, you're never truly off duty when you're on board. Thank you. Okay, Stephanie Stoll from NASA. Uh, there are at least two U.S.-based spacewalks to occur during your time on board the space station. Can you tell us about what is your role in those and how much are you looking forward to it? Well, that's a good question. It's always exciting when you think about uh, putting on a suit and going outside in space. Um, you say there's two. There's actually, during the whole six months we're up there, there's actually four EVAs planned in the U.S. segment. On the first EVA, um, I'll be supporting actually from inside on that one. I'll be working the robot arm. There's a lot of efforts or um, um, tasks that are being done that will move some large objects from one place to another. And uh, I will be moving Alexander Gerst, who will grab those objects and move him to another place where he'll, he'll install them. And on the second EVA, which is actually just a month away uh, from where we sit now, um, I'll be going outside with uh, Reed Wiseman, and we'll be replacing some units that are not failed but are, have had issues in the past uh, that have to do with generating electrical power. And then finally, uh, later in our expedition in the January time frame, I'm scheduled to go out with Terry Verts and prepare the station for future operations 
where manned vehicles will come up and actually dock to the space station, but we have to put some different <coughs> docking adapters on the current docking mechanisms, and we need to run power to those, and that's what Terry and I will be doing. Thank you. Maria Tomart, Russia Today. Yelena, question for you. What is your daughter doing to prepare you for flight, and uh, is she going to follow in the footsteps of her parents? or both cosmonauts. Well, actually, I was uh, preparing uh, my daughter and to go to school on September 1st uh, for her first school day. But of course, he supports me. He's very excited for me, happy for me. For her further future career, it all depends on her choice and what she wants to do. Thank you. Екатерина, you have another question? Will any of you support the web page on the Roscosmos website? Please send us your inputs and photos. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. We will take pictures, maybe small captions to them, because many people are interested in what is going on 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 board of the International Space Station. And so I think we will have a chance to bring it a little closer to the people. Yes, I continue following our site. I see that we have orbital galleries uh, that I did developed in, during my previous flight. So I see that people are interested in it, and the young people are interested in it. And so one of our objectives is to popularize cosmonautics and space flight, not only in Russia, but uh, everywhere in the world. So we hope to continue with this work, and uh, I will continue doing what I did during my previous space flight. Many photographs of the surface of the Earth, of cities, of space. That's all good, but I also want to show the the back side of this work and to see what's go uh, to show what's going on on board of the SS. Hello, sir. Gay. Uh, Question for Mikhail Kornienko and Scott Kelly. Here's my question. You are preparing for a, a one, the space flight of, with a duration of one year. How difficult will it be, do you think, compared to the six-month flight that we currently have? Second question is uh, your your, um, the, your space flight that, that will last for one year, is this uh, a, just a one-time occurrence, or are there any other ones planned as well? As far as I know, Roscosmos and NASA management is planning more than one space flight, long-duration space flight. As far as Scott and I are concerned, of course, uh, we are fully aware that it is not a walk in the park, but we've been in space, both of us. We know what it is, what it's like, and I'm sure we'll do fine. But again, it, it will be difficult, both physically and psychologically, but we feel that we're doing an important uh, thing to develop uh, to uh, towards a uh, Space flight. The preparation is somewhat different in that Misha and I, obviously, we're going to launch with Gennady and then return with uh, Sergei Volkov on the Soyuz. So we, at some point, will train with him for our uh, return. And um, furthermore, most of the, the training is very similar um, for the year-long flight, with the exception since we're going to be on board twice as long. Um, we, like in my case, I have more uh, payload training and training on the, the scientific experiments. And, and I would like to think when I get back, I would want to fly in space another year. I think I'm hoping that that's how I feel, but we will see. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, two more questions and we'll wrap it up. Hello, Irina Panemareva. 
Snimash. Question for the prime crew. Each of you is allowed to uh, take with you a certain amount of uh, personal items. What are you planning to bring with you, and how are you going to spend your free time? Uh, just a couple of personal items. My daughters are actually in the back corner, um, and I'm taking some things they're not even aware of. Just a couple of things that maybe they'll appreciate as they get older. So no details on what those things are, but just a, a couple items for them. Of course, we are not bringing much. It's about uh, the, the volume that is uh, uh, equal to the size of one and a half liter bottle. We take the items uh, that remind us of our families, of our friends, our small tokens. And there was an earlier question for the weightlessness indicator. And so the dog uh, that uh, my daughter gave me for our first, uh, for my first space flight, I'm bringing it with me again. But again, it depends. I will bring with me photographs of my family, of those near and dear to me, so that I can look at them, I can be happy for them. And maybe a small note, but that's personal. That's it. Thank you. Another question for the prime crew. You have an international team. The political situation in the world right now is very difficult. How does this affect the atmosphere within your team, or are you above all of this? Let's go back to the first uh, phrase, uh, first phrase that you said, uh, difficult international. No, I, I would disagree with that. Uh, we are professionals. And uh, the current the, situ the conditions where we will be living and working, where it's uh, truly dangerous to your health and to, to your survival. This, we're doing something that will benefit, uh, that the, the entire humanity will benefit. So there are no borders on board of the ISS. We share a table, uh, we share the workspace, so we take care of each other, just like we do on Earth, regardless of uh, our faith, gender, or nationality. We are united by one uh, profession, which is astronaut or cosmonaut. We're doing something for the entire humanity. Can Barry Wilmer answer this question? Yes, uh, I agree with what Sasha said. Also, on top of that, Sasha and Elena are not only my crew members, but they're also my friends. For two years, we've trained all over the globe together. They've been to my home, and we've ate, ate bro uh, broken bread together. And like Sasha said, there are situations in the place we're going where literally my life is in their hands, and theirs in mine. And we must have a very special trust of each other to go there and do things that hopefully eventually will be of benefit for all mankind. So yes, there are issues that take place around the world and around the globe and between nations, but both of our nations have tasked us with a certain specific goal, and that's what we've been marching to, like I said, for the two years we've been training and what we'll continue to do while we're on orbit. Uh, Yelena, would you like to add something to this? I don't see anything that I could add. I'll support what this guy said. However, whoever has a different opinion is, is wrong. Dear colleagues, our press conference is completed at this point. Now, what are we planning to do next? We will continue in the, at the Museum of Star City and Gagarin's office. Then we will go to the Kremlin Wall to set the flowers near Gagarin's grave and Korolev's grave. On September 13th, on Friday, the crew will be departing for Baikonur. So on the 12th of September, uh, you are all welcome here to see the crew off. 
Okay, dear colleagues, uh, please uh, stick around and we'll be taking pictures after this. Our prime crew making a record in the book, then we will switch and we'll have the backup crew we have this place of honor. We're very proud and very honored that we have a female crew member, our fourth female cosmonaut. They want to talk to you, that's for sure. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Tell him that we're signing the book. You see the lake of Hanga? That's where Yelena and I trained. Flight engineer and Expedition 42 commander, we're here out at Red Square in the Kremlin. How are you feeling about your preparations for flight? Well, actually, that's a good question. I hadn't thought about that in a few hours. I'm grateful to be at this point. This is a culmination of two and a half years of training. And to be at this point, training complete, we've got a few weeks to rest before launch. And to have the opportunity to come, to the, come here on, on a beautiful day. Um, to be inside the Kremlin, a place uh, when I was a kid, I would have never dreamed I'd be standing right here. It's, it's, fat, it's fantastic and just a, what a wonderful opportunity. You've been to the space station once before, five years ago, when you were a pilot on a space shuttle mission. 
and that was just for a short stay and now you're going to have an opportunity to spend six months up in space mm. what are you looking forward to the most about having all that extra time on board what am i looking forward to the most about being on space station and the extra time i can honestly say all of it the launch is going to be fascinating a different experience than the shuttle launch as far as the physical dynamics of it um, that's going to be fascinating, of course. Looking out the small window for the first time again and seeing that view from on orbit, looking at the, uh, the Earth from that vantage point, again, it's going to be magnificent. And having the opportunity to do that every single day for 168 days, what an opportunity to, to have that as well. And plus, living and working environment, multinational, national, multicultural, um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm so grateful that I've been blessed with this opportunity to share this with others, share it with my family, share it with uh, my friends, and uh, to share it with all of you. So it's, it's all wonderful, and I look forward to it all. Coach Wilmer, thank you very much. Have a great mission. Thank you. Dear Chairman of the Examination Commission, uh, Prime Soyuz TMA uh, M crew is prepared. Commander Alexander Samakutaev, good morning. We had fire training yesterday. Dear colleagues, we don't have much time, so please go ahead. You, you will be in space for six months. What are the main tasks uh, of your expedition? Well, this is a question that you could ask at our press conference. So we have over 50 experiments, plus 45 experiments that are already there. We have uh, spacewalks, we have uh, station outfitting, repair work, a lot of activities. Can you repeat your question? This is um, this was um, an examination sim. Uh, we uh, trained uh, at the uh, last time we trained at the uh, Russian segment. Now we're doing Soyuz. Question for the female astro uh, cosmonaut. How long have you been a uh, part of the cosmonaut corps? Since 2006. I've always uh, wanted uh, to work with space. I never thought that I would get this close to space. Okay, thank you very much for your um, questions. Let's uh, wish this crew good luck during their final examination.